Welcome to Breakthrough as we come together in the Lord Jesus Christ to worship him who alone deserves our worship, to hear from him and to be strengthened by him so we are enriched and ready to go out for him. We remain in these strange and difficult times when we cannot come together physically, but we are able to gather together under Christ in this way via YouTube. And so as we do, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that whatever changes in the world around us, whatever changes in our circumstances, you are unchanging. You are almighty God, creator of all things. And yet you are our Heavenly Father who loves us dearly, so much so that you sent, your, uh, sent us your son, Jesus, who died for us and who is risen that we might through faith in him be the very children of God. Lift us, Lord, this day to your throne of heavenly grace, that we might be strengthened in your service. In our worship, speak to us, speak with us. May each one of us know that we have been in your presence as we come together in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. I was praying about what scripture we should start our service with. God has given Penny, who will be speaking to us later, a passage from Ezekiel 37 about the Valley of Dry Bones. Where shall we start, I prayed, and was taken to this passage, which I invite you to say with me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Thank you, Lord. We worship him. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, we thank you that you welcome us into your courts, that we are set free because your son Jesus died for each one of us. Lord, as we come to this time together, enable us to have that truth deep in our hearts, that Jesus died for us, for me, and that he is risen and victorious over all things, that we are set free in him this day and every day. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus, as we pray, as we recognise that truth, we pray for all the things going on around us. We pray and give thanks for our NHS workers, for those who are working in caring for people in the community, in residential homes or in their own homes, for those on intensive care units, for those supporting the work of doctors and nurses as one of those doctors and nurses we pray for our government for wisdom that can only come from you true wisdom only comes from god and we pray for true wisdom for those in leadership in our nation and lord we pray for your healing of our nation for drawing of those who don't yet know you, who haven't known you before this time, into your family through faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you for those that have come to faith in recent days. And we pray that you will build them in that faith. But we pray, Lord, for more in this desperate time to come to know you, to come and know your, know your love for them, through Jesus Christ as you love us that they too would become would would be set free to be children of God and so Lord as we say thank you for all that you've given us we pray that others would come to know your love for them that they too would raise a hallelujah with us this evening. In Jesus' name, Amen.
everybody, all my Breakthrough family and everyone else who's tuned in to watch today's Breakthrough Evening Service. And welcome to my kitchen. This is a little strange. It's not at the front of a church. It's not following on a period of worship and praise and singing and prayer. And that makes me more nervous than when I stand up in front of real people, which is odd because this is just a camera. Actually, it's just a phone. And technology is marvellous and it's allowing us to carry on in some semblance of normality. And I've been asked to give the talk this evening. And so my talk is called Mountains and Valleys because in my daily reading plan a few weeks ago, it was saying about mountains and valleys and I was left thinking, well, why Lord? Because mountains are beautiful and valleys are beautiful. But the Lord was talking to me and letting me in on things and I thought I'd share them with you. The Lord said to me that I have to level the mountains and fill in the valleys with faith. Now I know in Matthew 17, 20, Jesus said to his disciples, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And that's an amazing thing to tell his disciples. And we know that nowadays we are his disciples still on earth. So if I count myself as a disciple of Jesus Christ, then this is true for me. Nothing will be impossible for you. So nothing will be impossible for me. And I can get a mountain to move through faith in him. He will do it for me in faith. Wow. So I said to God, what are these mountains? And he said to me, there are obstacles in your life the things you can't cope with and you'd rather find a way around the bottom of this mountain and not tackle climbing it but that doesn't get rid of the obstacle and you're carrying it and it's heavy. That was quite a hard thing to hear. There are plenty of people today all over the world staring at their mountain with growing desperation COVID-19 has locked down their businesses, made them redundant, and in some nations like India, brought them to the very brink of starvation. Media suggests that we British will be staring at the mountain of government debt, following the unprecedented level of financial support for a very long time, but it doesn't have to be like that. Psalm 97 tells us that God himself will make the mountains melt like wax before him. So, Ask him for help. Don't just sit there wringing your hands, looking at it in despair or turning your back on it, hoping it'll just go away. But climbing up that mountain with God is hard as you work through the steps to bring it under your control. But he will guide you in making the right choices along the path. In Isaiah, God tells us he will even make these paths easier to climb. In Isaiah 49, I will level the mountains to make roads. I was a bit puzzled by this as I'd always thought mountains represented success, closeness to God, as in mountaintop experiences. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and he will make me walk on my high places follows on from the hymn of faith in Habakkuk 3, where the harvests have failed, the livestock has died, and there seems to be no hope. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord, the God of my salvation, he continues. I notice that in this scripture it says, I will walk on my high places, my mountains. I will overcome and I will have the obstacles under my feet. Now that will feel good. A real mountaintop experience. So I ask God, what about the valleys? What do they do? They're beautiful, surely, and always I thought mountains beautiful too. This is what came to my mind in response. The valleys. Have you never heard of the Valley of Tears? 
Valleys are depressions in the earth and this is an object lesson. Depression, hopelessness, unending sorrow, death, discouraged and having given up all hope equals the valley of despair. There is a prophecy about a valley of death, a place of no hope in Ezekiel 37 in the Old Testament. Ezekiel was a prophet who often heard from God in a kind of waking dream. In this case, the Holy Spirit took him to a place, a valley filled with bleached, bare bones. The Valley of the Dry Bones The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth amongst them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath from the four winds, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life, and they stood on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and that I have done it, declares the Lord. This valley, it is full of dried up hope, dried up belief in the promises of God by the people of Israel who are living under an invader. The Bible says that the unsaved are dead in their sins because the promise of heaven is not yet theirs. They do not acknowledge God even exists or is relevant. They have no intention of handing over the control of their lives to him. They certainly don't love him. This valley of bones is a picture of people like that. At this time, rather than seeking God with all their hearts, the Israelites were trying to sort it out all in their own way. They were getting into the cults and practices of their captors and forgetting about the God who called them his special and blessed people. They had come through a time of awful and harrowing death, witnessing scenes no one should ever see before being transported to another land. I'm sure this must have upset their minds and led them to escapist fantasies, to mental maybe even helped to mental numbness with mind-altering substances. And I am aware that 600 years before Christ was born was when this went on. So they didn't have Jesus or the Holy Spirit. I am in a way sympathetic to them, how they found themselves in this mess. The prophets Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Ezra and Daniel all spoke with God's own words at this time, but all were silenced by the ruling Israelites. They all had the message of repent of your sins, as well as hopeful promises of the end of their time of containment, 
under a foreign and unwelcome invader. This reminds me a little bit of our world today. Now millions of people are living at home because of rules and fear of invasion, infection by this unwelcome alien invader, COVID-19. At this moment, more than 500,000 have died around the world. So there are millions living with devastated lives where hope has been extinguished, snuffed out as another heart stops beating. Just like the captured say in this vision, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone, we are cut off. So too do the people of today right around the world. And as I write these words, I'm moved to tears, yet I don't know anyone who has died. So why do I feel such sorrow? When I just feel God is saying to me, he is weeping too. But to those who turn to him, he promises to reclothe them in clothes of hope, eventually clothes of joy. This is the flesh and the skin coming onto those bones in the valley. He will breathe his life into them if they ask. They will be his people and he will be their God. In Habakkuk, the following verses in the next chapter are full of references to victories over enemies under a great king. Here, the hopeless who were unable to carry on God's commands and have withered away to bones have stood up in strength as a great army. They have a great leader and like all well-trained soldiers, they will obey. Their eyes are on their leader, God, and they have been given back the promises that they abandoned years ago. Nothing is hopeless if we turn back to God and let him be our leader. How good are we at obedience? Are we fit and ready like an army? Well, like many others in the Breakthrough family, I do feel that God needs us to be fit and ready like an army after the lockdown ends. We're called to do the work, work of compassion and mercy, listening and grace towards our neighbours, work in prayer of battling the enemy of us all, Satan, behind the scenes. We will be battling for these neighbours, but in front of them we will pray and encourage. But we need to remember that we pray with the authority given to us by our Lord Jesus. As he told his disciples in John, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. And in that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you anything you ask in my name. So if God has prompted me to pray for someone else's situation, do I remember to take up this position of authority, taking command of the precise reason for their need, their mountain, their valley, in Jesus' name? Because it is that type of prayer that gets a precise answer and gives a good testimony. In the Old Testament, God told the people through his prophet in Psalms 34, when his people pray for help, he listens and rescues them from their troubles. The Lord is there to rescue all who are discouraged and have given up hope. This strange period of observing social distancing seems to have had a profound effect. Excuse me. It has seems to have flattened the curve of infections and deaths from COVID-19 in the UK. And apparently our government has been surprised by the level of adherence to the instructions by some 90% of the population. We have obeyed in ways unheard of, even as low as 50% was expected, but 90%, wow. And it seems to have worked, hopefully. Aligning ourselves to one set of instructions without the rule of law to threaten our finances or freedom is not the modern British way. Our great-grandparents' generation had a markedly greater respect for their leaders, not just political, but including teachers, police and the church. 
we have fallen out of love with the notion of simply supporting our leaders with our good intentions, certain that we can do everything a better way ourselves. Maybe now we're seeing the benefit of obeying together rather than the pulling apart of our anarchy. Hopefully we will go on to respect the fact that we sometimes don't know best. And that will include a greater desire to find out about the faith of their forebears based on the love of God. But you might say, what about me? I am not one of those skeletons in the valley of bones because I have a real and living faith. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. What can I do about the valleys in my life? I asked the Lord and he answered, you need to give your depression, your sorrow, your tears to me. Yes, filled with tears, the, lake, the valley will become a lake and a lake is no longer a valley. But it is so much better to fill it with hope, with joy, with purpose. In the word it says God will store up our tears in a bottle. He will exchange our tears for joy. And Jesus himself tells us he will exchange our yoke of heaviness, defeat and sorrow for his, which is light and easy to carry. There are things in my life I need to let go. These worries, sorrows, disappointments and unbelief which weigh me down. I think we can all acknowledge this, unbelief even, because if we've asked God to answer a prayer about our worries, our concerns, but then go and pick it up again and put it back on our shoulders and walk on, Surely we are not believing that he will answer. We aren't trusting the one who never lies, who always answers his promises. The obstacles in my life are not impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. I might not want to tackle them, but he's prompting me. And he promises not to put me through anything more than I can endure with his grace. The valleys, my sense of hopelessness that I can never improve, that I always make the same mistakes. Those valleys, those depressions, those places filled with tears, I can give to him. And he will fill it up with his well of salvation. That water that fills my valley to become a lake fills it with hope, with joy and with a purpose. Thank you, Penny. So let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you that nothing is impossible with you not anything and that where we are feeling weighed down where those valleys feel deep we ask now that you would come and fill those valleys up with your grace with the well of salvation that we know is in jesus christ your son our lord thank you father that jesus's yoke is light and not heavy. Enable us to let go of those things that are troubling us, that sense of hopelessness, especially at this time, but at all times, to lay those things at the foot of the cross, that we might know the healing of Jesus Christ and hopefulness. that can only be found in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you come. Thank you that you come by your grace. Thank you that you come by your death and your resurrection. 
and you call us to yourself and you heal us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's sing together.
share in the words of the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. As I do each week, can I just uh, give you that opportunity to make an offering to the work of our breakthrough and our church life together. Uh, by using our website at www.kingsdowncreekside.co.uk uh, and going to the giving page to make that offering. Thank you for your generosity. A reminder that uh, I continue to live stream morning prayer with a service of readings and prayer at, at nine o'clock every morning on this channel and on Facebook uh, every day of the week. And also on Wednesday, our Bible study groups uh, will meet again at half past two and half past seven uh, via Zoom. And as we come to the end of our time together, we have an extra song, a song which is a prayer. And I pray that as we sing this song, you'll be praying that prayer and that we will all be asking God for peace to be with us day by day. Amen. Saviour and my God, hurry. 